Could you tell us about Mona Lisa and the Blood Moon and your character in the film? Um, yeah, I mean, Mona Lisa and the Blood Moon is a psychedelic delve, deep dive into the cauldron of New Orleans and the psychiatry wards and and, 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 and deepest, darkest corners and um, the people on the peripheries and edge of society all set to like a banging house beat and um, some crazy old lenses, <laughs> some crazy old 14 mil lenses. And, um, you know, and we were all beaten to the drum of the most incredible composer, mm -hmm. Anna Lily, you know, um, and Fuzzy's, Fuzz is the Cheshire Cat, man. He's the, he exists outside of the human struggle, you know. He's a rainbow and a and a and a um, a shooting star, you know. And uh, he's a trip in himself, you know. If you if you if you read too much into him and get scared off, then you miss the trick, you know. Because he's a special dude. You give him the chance, and he's sweet and lovely and will be one of those rare people that will give without expecting in return. Yeah. You know, and I suppose a lot of this story is about people just taking from Mona Lisa, you know? Yeah. Just taking from the woman, seeing what she offers and just leeching, um, manipulating and leeching. And when Fuzzy ain't like that, you know? And even though he seems dangerous at the beginning and as he's kind of up front, you know, that's just his nature. And, 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 and as you know him by the end of it, if you went back and rewatched the movie, you'd be like, oh, I know, he's cool. He was nice from the beginning. I, yeah. I shouldn't have thought bad of him, you know? You, you've brought so many iconic characters to life on the screen. What is your vetting process like when you're deciding what roles to go out for? What was it about Fuzz that attracted you to this project? Oh, man, Fuzz is the greatest, man. Like, Fuzz is the coolest. I never heard of a character like Fuzz before. I like cameo roles as well. I like, um, you know, to be able to just kind of dip into things, not necessarily be the lead. Um, and just kind of add another energy, it's, you know, kind of like the chili in the um, in the pot. It's like, add, add a flavor that's, that's, that's different from the rest of the stew. And it's like a lot of the time, that's what dances on your tongue and what you remember at the end of it. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, Fuzz was just like the coolest fucking proposition ever, you know? I was just like, damn, how can this guy be like nothing like me and like actually kind of like closer to me in real life than any character I've ever played before, mm -hmm. which sounds like messed up and untrue because we are so different in so many ways, you know? But it's mostly the superficial shit, the dress sense, the tattoos, the accent, you know, uh, certain drugs. These things are different. But, you know, I exist. I, 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 I um, I'm a good dude that looks that looks like I might be trouble. <laughs> Just like Fuzz. So, um, I don't know, man. It was nice to play someone who was like really kind but also really fucked up and different, you yeah. know? So my my vetting process is like, it's just gotta be something I've never, never done before, you know? I can't have you turning on the telly and being like, ah, oh, it's that guy, I know what it is. I know what this movie is just cause he's mm. in it. It's like, nah, I want you to turn the movie on and be like, is that that guy? No, nah, that's not him. And then be like, it is him, you know? Wow, he looks so different and he sounds so different and he feels so different. Or I want you to turn on the movie and not even know it's me, ideally. So, um, and I want to have fun. And I can only have fun if, if it's challenging in a, in a new way, you know? And I want to get better. I want to improve. And so for me to improve, I need to take on these different, um, different roles and challenges, you know? Definitely. Speaking of having fun, this is such an eccentric character, which I imagine for you as an actor is a lot of fun to play, but you also have to keep him grounded in this world. How are you able to find that balance? Mm, I know, I know. 
I don't know that underbelly of New Orleans, but I know the underbelly. So, and you know, the, the process of like finding that balance, if you watch the, if you watched all of the takes that we didn't use, you know, you'll see where the balance wasn't right, I'm sure. Um, you know, let's say for instance, I remember when we were in the car at the end, uh, when I'm saying goodbye to them, giving her the, the headphones, and like, I was really sad and like playing it as such. And Lily was like, no, 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 no. She's like, Buzz ain't sad, man. Buzz knows they're gonna see each other again, man. Buzz knows this is part of the, this is part of it, man. This is like, there's something uh, divine at stake here. This is like, you know, they're soulmates, it's meant to be. So, so let it go, man, let go of everything. And um, so I tried it and I was like, yeah, that felt great, you know? And when I watched the movie, actually, I was like, I could really see that. And I thought, thank God she told me mm. not to. It's thank God she told me to change it. And thank God she didn't use those other takes in the edit. So, you know, that's kind of the funnest part of the process is going out there and tweaking it and feeling it. I think every director that works with me knows that, like, I give them a lot of variation for the edit room nowadays, not only in my career, maybe, but nowadays. And, um, you know, I'm going to... Uh, I'm gonna try lots of different shit and 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 you know hopefully some of it will be interesting and 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 uh will translate. I know Lily has emerged as such a distinct voice in this industry. What was it like getting to collaborate with her? And is it a different filming experience when you're working on a project where the person who created this universe and world is also at the helm directing? It's the best when it's like that. I've got that at the moment with Zack Snyder. And it just means any question you ask, they have the answer. This stuff is deep inside their head, you know? And they still want us to bring something to it. They, they Just because they know who this person is, sometimes personally know this person, they still want us to bring it to life and to bring something to it. And it's like, I, I feel like they appreciate even more when you bring stuff to the table, when you, when you, when you collaborate with them and you bring ideas. And, and really it just means that they're even better at vetting those ideas because you'll be like, oh man, how about I do this? And they'll be like, no, that's not right because of this. And you'll be like, great answer. I know you, or you'll be like, let's try this. And they'll be like, that's exactly right. You got it. And you'll be like, great. So either way is like, it just couldn't be better than when the, 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 the director is the writer as well. But you know, how was it working with Anna Lily? Intoxicating, psychedelic. It, it was like, into the void in creativity. It was like a deep dive and vision quest, adventure time journey into like, enthusiasm and, mm music and subversion. It was really like a wonderful, wonderful experience that even if the movie had come out and hadn't been as cool as and brilliant as I think it is, I would have still been like, that experience was, I'm so lucky, I'm so grateful to have experiences like that in my life, you know, I really am. You're also a writer, direct, director yourself. Have you found that your experience working the, behind the camera has now changed the way that you approach your work on screen? Yeah, of course. Of course, you know, if you're, I mean, I say it like sports. I'm, I'm wearing a football jersey or soccer if, in the States, but, um, <laughs> you know, if you're a player, that's going to help you, I think, when you become a manager because you understand the people you're dealing with and you understand their needs and you understand the day-to-day -day realities of pressures that they're actually under. Then when you go to the other side, which is to move from the child to the adult state, you experience a whole other side of it that as a player, you can't understand. And as a manager, you say, well, now I have all of the responsibility. Now I need to protect my players. All of the information doesn't go to them. So as a player, you think, huh, they've been keeping stuff you know, they've been protecting me from things and 
you know, they have to deal with all this shit. And, you know, there's so much that goes into making movies and, and, and it's so complicated. And there's so much to think about as a director. You then go back as a, or as a manager, then you go back as a player, as an actor. And it's like, it's like you're seeing a 4D, you know, and you understand what they actually want. So when they change the lens, when they make a choice about, you know, moving from handheld to steady cam to the crane to whatever, when they are running late and they say, all right, we're just going to do whip pan one take whip pan because we ain't got time for coverage of three setups. Like you really understand the nature of like, okay, so they're moving to whip pan. So this is energetic now, and you know exactly how things are going to be. And it really informs you a lot more from the beginning. You know, the first time I stepped on movie sets, I was like, what the fuck is this, man? And this is the most confusing thing I've ever seen in my life. Who the hell are all these people? What the hell are they doing? And like, why does it need to be 200 of them or whatever? And I'm never going to know who they are, let alone like what jobs they do. And so I became a scholar and I really was like, okay, I'm going to study this shit. So I just go up and ask like, what's your job? Like, what do you do? Okay. What does that mean? Why is that? What are you doing with that camera? And why is that bit so long at the front? And you know, whatever. Um, why are we waiting 45 minutes for, for like lighting or whatever? So, you know, finding all this stuff out, and analyzing it for so many years has given me quite a wide knowledge and all the experience of being on set of like Robert Rodriguez, Barry Jenkins, Roland Emmerich, you know, all of these guys are completely different animals, you know, uh, different creatives have really different approaches to the nuance of emotion and um, cinematography. So, if you have your eyes open, you can learn a lot in this job, man. So I always like can never understand when actors are just coasting, just sitting around, or like they just want to go back to the green room. I'm like, no, nah, I want to stay with the crew. I want to be on set. I want to be learning. And like, this is where it's like the ant hive and where it's buzzing. So um, it's definitely that's a very long answer to say is that definitely one informs the other and vice versa. Great answer. And also another perfect so I get with this next question, but mentorship has been such a driving force in your career. When you're working with a young actor like your co-star, Evan, what advice are you sharing with them about how to traverse this industry and the craft? Oh, bless him, man. I didn't really so much. Uh, well, my thing is always like, like a Liverpool great Stephen Gerrard is like lead by example rather than by like telling everyone. Um, although some people may argue with that. Um, but no, I definitely try to kind of lead by example uh, to younger actors. And I talk with them and talk more about like kind of talk through my experiences and things I've learned that weren't so good rather than telling them how they should be. But I definitely like tell them to like stay humble, protect their mental health um, and all of that. But Evan's real young, man. So, you know, we were just hanging out, cracking joke. Like we, we had so much fun on set. And we was just cracking joke. That's my little dude. And um, damn it, he's more professional than me. You know? <laughs> yeah, you know, one of the themes within this film is about the quest to find freedom, which has become increasingly relevant with the world that we're living in right now. Has this project taken a new light, given everything that we've experienced in the past few years? And what do you hope audiences take away after they see it? <sighs> Man, it's hard to separate art and mm. reality and culture and you know uh, Iranian American filmmaker and with everything that's happening in Iran right now you know it could leave one feeling guilty for talking about the movie rather than talking about that the pandemic you know the political situation worldwide and the the way that things have been tipping lately is 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 obviously um, a challenge for everyone. The arts have always been there, and people have offered them as this place of respite, and you know, said, "Oh, you do an important job because you entertain the people and make them forget about it." I don't know. I think we could spend our time better being like volunteering and actually doing some shit. 
supporting people and mentoring people. Um, so I don't know, man. I'm definitely not the guy to ask about, ask for a coherent answer about all this shit. I'm not the guy to ask for a coherent answer about anything. But what do I hope people take from the movie? I hope they come out and they feel fucked up. Like, did someone spike my drink? <laughs> because this movie is a trip. It's a trip, man. And I, I hope people feel it in their loins, like Bernie does, you know, like it's the full moon. And yeah, I hope, I hope when it's a full moon, they look up. And when it's a blood moon, they look up and they say, oh, there's something in the air tonight. Where's Mona Lisa? Um, but bottom line is, after all of that, like, I just hope they have fun. Like, I, I think it's a really fun movie. We had an incredible amount of fun making it. And um, I really hope that translates onto the screen.